Hey guys, so I've been making pixel art for indie games for about three years now, and like any skill, learning all of the hidden rules and secrets to improve your work takes a very long time. So today I decided to compile 20 tips that I think are absolutely essential for understanding and improving your pixel art. Beginning with some basic fundamentals that I wish I learned when I was first starting out, then we'll get into the more advanced concepts. Before we get started, it's worth mentioning that there really aren't any rules when it comes to making art, but following just a few of these guidelines might help you with developing your own personal style. But first, hey, I'm Apox Fox, and I make game design related videos every week. If you learned something new in this video, consider subscribing. We'd love to have you. All right, let's get started. Before we can draw anything, you gotta decide what colors you wanna use. Choosing the right colors is very important, and it's honestly something that I still struggle with when making my own pixel art. The good news is, there's a lot of great resources out there for finding community-made color palettes that are ready to use. My favorite is a website called LowSpec, which has a huge library of palettes to choose from. You can always make your own palettes later on, but when you're first starting a new project, using one of these pre-made palettes is a good place to start. I'll also mention that having a limited color palette is actually a good thing. Less colors makes you think outside the box and take risks more. Believe it or not, Undertale uses 29 colors across the entire game. Stardew Valley only uses 52 colors. I released a game called Flipknot that only uses 8 colors in total. Don't think of a small palette as limiting, think of it as an opportunity to form a style and mood for your game. I'm not sure why, but the question I get asked by far the most is what resolution should my pixel art be, or what canvas size should I use? Here's the honest truth about that question. There's really no right answer. What canvas size and resolution you use depends on two factors. For one, what kind of game are you making? If you're making a platformer, 16x16 16 16 sprites are good because the character is probably going to be small on the screen anyways. If you're making a fighting game with precise inputs and frame-perfect timing, having bigger sprites is important for visual cues and attack animations. It also depends on how much time you want to work on art. It's just a fact that larger sprites take a lot longer to make than smaller sprites. So for beginners, I highly recommend starting small in order to learn the fundamentals in the most efficient way possible. When it comes to detail, less is absolutely more. You'll figure out pretty quickly with pixel art that trying to fit small details into your sprites is not always going to work. I'll give you an example. If you were to draw a brick wall, drawing every brick individually can make the wall feel overcrowded and muddy. But if you only draw a few bricks here and there, it looks a lot cleaner and people fill in the blanks by themselves. The key here is to imply detail rather than trying to fit everything in your arts. Another good example of this is character sprites. Most of the time, the only face details necessary for a character are two eyes, and sometimes there's no eyes at all. The best way to approach detail is to emphasize the important parts of your design and discard everything else. Ever wondered why pixel art exists? When games were first getting made, the systems they ran on were very limited, so they had a lot of restrictions. One of these being a very limited color palette to save for memory. Pixel art is a medium born from limitation, and because of that, limitation is actually its biggest strength. So as a final way to reiterate the previous three tips, having less color, a smaller scale, and less detail is genuinely a good way to tackle learning pixel art. Of course, there are outliers to this, but if you want to improve your style in the fastest way possible, these first tips are going to be most relevant. If you're trying to figure out how to draw a rock, keep pictures of rocks nearby as a reference. You might think you know how a rock is supposed to look in your head, but our brains tend to leave out some important information. I use references for everything I draw, everything is inspired by something, so don't feel bad about using those inspirations to create something new. This might be a hot take, but I really don't think there's anything wrong at all with using other pixel art as a style reference. Obviously, it's not okay to just copy something pixel by pixel and claim it as your own, but taking inspiration from other artists is a great way to learn and develop your own style. The key to great pixel art character design is having a strong silhouette. If you can figure out who a character is just by its general shape, it's probably a good design. I think the best way to get a strong silhouette is to worry less about color in the beginning and focus more on the overall shape. Blocking in areas and emphasizing the things you want people to focus on is a great way to make a strong silhouette. 
There are a lot of hidden rules in pixel art that we will go over, but the most important thing to follow is consistency. If some of your sprites have black outlines, make sure they all do. A general rule I like to follow for my own style is that characters and interactable objects have dark outlines, and the stuff that you can't interact with don't. It's just a good way to draw attention to what you want the players to see, and phase out the stuff that isn't as important. Along those same lines, it's a good idea to make different rules to separate the foreground and background of a scene. Another thing I like to do in platformers specifically is create a very bright and clear border of where the player can actually stand and walk around. Utilizing brighter or darker colors to contrast and separate the scene only makes your game easier for the player to understand, which in general is a good thing. Drawing lines in pixel art can feel unnatural at first, and oftentimes it can look a little weird. There is a very important trick to this though that can really help your lines look more natural. Pixel perfect lines are basically just lines that follow a rhythm or pattern to look more seamless. It's a bit tricky to put into words, but here are some examples of what I mean. Of course there are exceptions to this rule when it's necessary to break the flow, but overall having cleaner lines that don't abruptly drop off or change their pattern just looks more professional. Along those same lines, pun intended, avoid making chunky lines. Pixel lines only really need to connect at the corners instead of making these thick ones. I see a lot of people use thicker lines as a style choice, and I actually do like it a lot, but it only really works if you're super intentional with it. If you're working on smaller details or outlining your sprites, I recommend thin and consistent lines so that you can fit in more detail. This is really just a bonus tip for lines, but it's honestly up to your own style whether or not you use it. Sometimes instead of using black outlines, you can use a darker shade of whatever the inside of your sprite is. I do this a lot for portraits, so for example, I make the outline of the face a darker skin tone, and same with the hair and clothes. Again, this is really just a style choice, but I like the way it looks. Shading in pixel art is a little weird because you can't really blend a pixel in the same way you could with paint. It's just another limitation of pixel art that you can use to your advantage. Something that people struggle with at the beginning is pillow shading, which basically means adding shade to an object without any clear direction or light source. Instead, define where the light is coming from. For my games, I generally decide that the light source is either on the top right or left of the screen, but once you decide, that's usually what the light source direction will be for the entire game. In order to stay consistent, make sure that all other objects follow the same light direction. Dithering is a very common way to shade for pixel art. I personally don't use it often, but for games with larger sprite sizes and more detail, dithering can be a great tool. In pixel art, dithering is basically an alternative to blending colors, so if you feel like your shading is too abrupt, consider giving this a try. Now we're getting into what I consider to be the more advanced side of pixel art, and these are lessons that I've really only put into practice over the past year. Colors aren't literal. If I told you to draw the sky, you might think to use a light shade of blue. However, if you look at references of the sky, there's actually a lot of different colors blending together. Oranges, reds, purples, pinks, sometimes greens. This is just a small example, but depending on a light source, color can be pretty abstract. This goes for anything. If you want to shade a red ball, instead of using a darker shade of red, use a purple. Instead of using a light red for the highlights, try a yellow or orange. This is called hue shifting, and it's used a lot in pixel art. Don't be afraid to break your palette. Now, I know I said that your color palette should be small, and I stand by that, but don't be afraid to break free from your palette every once in a while. This took me a super long time to learn. For some reason in my head, I thought that adding a new color means you need to add it to the rest of the game. That's just not true at all. If you want to find a darker shade of green that's not in your palette already, use it. Who cares? If it works, it works. One of the greatest blessings given to us by the digital art gods is the ability to use layers. It's a great way to add more to your art without worrying about overwriting and messing up what you've already made. I used to use layers to separate different elements in my arts, and I recently realized that layers are actually a great way to take risks and try something new. Want to add a tree but don't know if it'll look good? Draw it on a new layer, and worst case scenario, you can always just delete it. Want to see if your art looks 
looks better in a different color palette, duplicate the layer and change the colors so that you can always go back to the old version if it sucks. Bottom line, you really can't go wrong with layers. You'll probably just end up regretting not using them more down the line. When learning pixel art, it's only natural that as soon as you figure out the basics of your software of choice, you want to dive right in and start drawing. And you should. Learning a new skill is done best by messing around and figuring things out for yourself. However, it's definitely worth mentioning that a lot of pixel art softwares have some hidden tricks that make creating art a lot more efficient. I use a software called Asprite and it has a ton of these hidden tools. Just this past year, I found out that there's an option to mirror your drawings for symmetry. I also found a keyboard input completely by accident that lets you change any color in your drawing to something else. Instead of manually doing it with a paint bucket which can get very tedious. You'll definitely learn more of these tricks over time, but checking out tutorials and reading documentation of the software you use can make a huge difference on how you approach making pixel art. Here's another important lesson that took me a very long time to figure out. When detailing your pixel art, there are two options. You can either use single pixels or clusters of pixels. Single pixels are used to draw attention to a specific area of your sprite. For example, in the portrait for the main character of my game Rem Runners, I gave Junebug a one pixel mole on her face and it's an intentional design choice, so I don't mind if it draws your eyes to it. The downside of using single pixels is that if you do it too much, you can not only draw attention away from more important details, but can also make your art look muddy and overwhelming. That's where cluster pixels come in. If you combine multiple pixels together, it can make your details look less like an accident and it draws less attention. I'm not going to pretend to know why, it's really just something that you learn from drawing a lot of stuff. While I do believe that a lot of these tips are pretty universally agreed upon by people who make pixel art, the true key to developing your own style is to make your own set of rules. This is what sets apart a game that flips random assets versus following one artist's clear vision. Let's use the example of a pixel art coin. Depending on a set of personal rules, you can draw a coin 100 different ways. Some use less detail, and some use more. Some use black outlines, some don't use any outline. Angles of perspective, shading, highlights, hard lines or curved lines, canvas size, these are just a few of the many rules you can set for your own art style. No matter what restrictions you put on your arts, the key is to keep these rules consistent across all of your arts if you're making a game. The first rule to learning any skill is to practice a lot, and as obvious as it sounds, it's the number one thing that's going to help you improve. I can tell you all these secrets I've learned that helped me grow as an artist, but none of that really matters if you don't put the time in to learn these lessons yourself. Everything is trial and error. Failure is a huge part of the growing process, but as long as you take those failures to heart and keep pushing forward, you'll always be a better artist than you were yesterday. And the final tip for making better pixel art is to share your work with others. The best way to improve your pixel art is to show it off and get plenty of feedback. There are plenty of places to share your work. We actually have a Discord server with a bunch of cool developers and artists. If you want to join and share your art there, then we'd love to have you. At the end of the day though, the only real rule to making art is to have fun. Every art form takes a lot of practice to master, but there's really no point in any of this if you aren't enjoying the process. So whether you use all of these tips or ignore them completely, it really doesn't matter as long as you're having fun. Thanks so much for watching. If you learned something new in this video, please consider subscribing to see more game design related videos every week. Appreciate you guys and I'll see you later. Peace.